I'd like to welcome you to today. Um, we're talking building a sales process with data with Matt Hollis and Steve Finley. Um, we're going to be covering off where sales processes break down, what to look out for, quick fixes and workarounds versus long-term solutions. And then also the guys are gonna chat through some real life examples that will help you learn from. Um, before I move on though, I'm just going to have a little bit of a chat about who Flexile is, um, who we are and what we do basically. Uh, so Flexile was designed from the ground up to make quoting better, faster, easier, and more accurate. Flexile provides a single online place to manage all your products and pricing, and it integrates into all of your other systems that need to know about products, such as your CRM, OSS, BSS, and billing. And I'm gonna leave it there because Matt is going to chat through what Flexile is in a lot more detail later on in the session. Um, and I'm gonna cover off who our speakers are. So we have uh, two awesome speakers for today. First, I'd like to introduce Steve Finley. He's the account executive over at Quilla. Uh, at Quilla, Steve helps companies create beautiful, responsive sales and marketing documents. And Quilla is one of Australia's most exciting tech companies, having secured Series A funding, uh, circa 10 million Australian dollars, amidst the early challenges of COVID pandemic. So that is pretty spectacular. And then we also have on the line, Matt Hollis, who is CEO of Flexar. Uh, Matt leads Flexile, we're a configure price quote platform for IT and telecommunications organizations designed to speed up sales and save money and time. And then Matt has more than 25 years of sales executive and management experience working with successful and fast growing uh, technology, Australian technology companies. And so on that note, I'm going to hand it over to Matt who's going to kick off our session for today. Thank you, Nicole. And Big welcome to Steve. Steve's in the UK, everybody. It's what, about 11 p.m. over there, Steve. So he's uh, stepped up to join us. So really appreciate that, mate. That is fantastic. And we, we asked him, me. Yeah, so we asked uh, Steve to join us from Quilla. We've had a relatively long relationship, about 18 months. And it's really because Quilla's, you know, absolutely adjacent to what we do. So at Flexile, we're all about that accuracy of quoting, managing your costing, you know, products, pricing, Getting that real accuracy of data through the system. And Quilla to us is that natural extension that once you've got everything configured, priced and quoted, you want to do a pretty proposal to your customer and send it through. So there's this real symbiotic relationship between the two, which is quite exciting. Now, Steve, just wanted to kick off by, you know, giving you the opportunity to give a two minute overview of your background so people can understand your experience and uh, yeah, where you come from. Yeah, thanks Matt. Appreciate you having me today and um, sure. So. Um, I cut my teeth in the UK in banking with Royal Bank of Scotland back before the, the credit crunch and then um, got the chance to move out to Australia and worked uh, actually executing marketing events for Citibank around Australia, which was, was good fun. Um, spent a couple of years living in the US and um, off the back of that got involved with Quilla. Um, been with them for just over two years now. So I've worked remotely with Quilla, helping clients in Australia, the US, North America, and then um, since recently getting back to London uh, here in Europe as well. Yeah, cool. All right. And what's uh, what's sort of top of mind at Quiller at the moment? What's the uh, you know the hottest topic for your customers? Yeah, I think we we we're, we're often um, we're often solving the problem for our customers that they come to us with this. Um, this almost willingness to want to do documents and sales proposals better. And I think the sales proposal itself is the key pain point that, that their experience lends them to kind of reach out to someone like Quilla. Um, and so then we really work with them across their, their entire sales cycle with all their customer facing documents, so some or all of them. And, um, and so, yeah, we're, we're really in that sort of conversation space. Yeah, cool. So I thought we'd kick off today talking about a few horror stories just to try and sort of set the tone. I mean, you know, I think a lot of what we're going to talk about is, you know, what a sales process look like in 2021, but we've all seen sure. some stories. So let's, let's kick off. I'll, I'll share one first, Steve, and then we'll head over to you. So I was um, lucky enough to work at uh, a company in Australia called Vocus. It was incredibly fast growing and we got to acquire 17 companies over sort of about 17 years. So we got to see a lot of sales, sales process. And I'd say the vast majority of what I've learned was what not to do. So a really classic example to me, and I won't name this company, but we used to previously compete against a company at Vocus and they just seemed so slow to get their price to the customer. And we would often 
you know, quote, get an order form signed before they'd even get the quote in. And we could never really understand stand why or what they were doing. And certainly it cost them some really big deals. And there was one deal that was, you know, tens of millions of dollars, uh, a very big US cloud company. They rang us and said, look, we're in a real hurry. We need a deal. What can you do? We collaborated three or four days. We had it back in front of them signed about four days later. And uh, this big cloud company rec recounted quite amusingly to us that four weeks later, our major competitor came back and said, we're ready to quote. And they said, yeah, well, you know, the other guys have already started building, so sorry. And what was really fascinating to me was when we, we actually acquired this company as part of the journey at Vocus. And when we acquired it, one of my first things was to look at was to say, what's your sales process? Why is this so hard? And that set up this incredibly complicated and very serial sales process where, you know, the second step couldn't happen before the first step and the third step, and et cetera, et cetera. So everything sort of stacked on top. And they hadn't to me developed business rules. So, you know, if it meets these rules, just go ahead. And so everything, every big deal they did was effectively bespoke. There was no process. And it must have cost them a huge amount of money over the years. And in fact, if they hadn't got that right, I don't think we could have acquired them. So to me, you know, that's how critical great sales process is. Steve, any, anything on your side that you've seen that uh, concerned you over the years? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's been a lot, of, a lot that's concerned me, that's for sure. Um, I think like my, my example is a little bit more situational. I was in, um, I was in London. I've actually been, was living in Australia at the time, but in, in London, just visiting family here. And um, I got an opportunity to present with uh, a couple of tech leads to Commonwealth Bank's Innovation Lab. And so you wouldn't really get the opportunity in Australia, just given how big an organization, how tough it is to sort of go through some of the channels with CBA. But um, I feel like we sort of found a backdoor in to, to present with the, um, the sort of satellite innovation lab they had in London at the time. And so it was a you know a great opportunity to go in and um, have a little bit of a, yeah, like, like I said, like a backdoor into the bank and, and present. And so I went in with, with two tech leads and, just managed to just really mess up this meeting completely. Like if there was like a, a book on everything you should do wrong in a sales meeting, I let my tech leads go into too much detail on tech rather than keeping it to an overview, lost a little bit of control about the process, came away from the meeting, not having a clue if they even understood what we were trying to, to pitch to them. Um, and I think it just, you know, it just taught me a lot about sort of meeting control and kind of executive presence and trying to own those processes, even when you, you know, you're collaborating and doing work with colleagues as well. So um, I guess the learning, though, is that with some of these big organizations, CBA being a great example, there are, you know, routes that you can get to, to the right people in those organizations. And um, hopefully you won't mess it up like I did. Yeah, and look, I, I think it's probably a, a classic tale a lot of people heard about. And, I, you know, I, I sort of think about that as going down rabbit holes. And, right. you know, one of the things we're trying to do in the sales, especially when you're in that, that important meeting, is keep our, particularly our technical people, out of rabbit holes and actually just answering the question asked, right? So, yeah, very, very important. Very important. For sure. I wanted to, let, let's get into sort of sales process. And just for those on the call, when I talk about sales process, it's, it's a very broad term and just really trying to encompass that whole idea from, you know, what do you do when a lead comes in? How do you get a quote? You know, how do you qualify? How do you engage? How do you quote? All the way through to getting a signed order form. And to me, the sales process ends at the site's signed order form in terms of what we're talking about today. Because, you know, theoretically, you've got an awesome team at the back end you hand it over to. Now, a lot of products, obviously, the account managers or the salesperson needs to stick with it to nurse it through. But just today, we're sort of talking through to, to, to sign the order form. So to me, the absolute fundamental of why we spend time in sales process is because it helps you sell more. So when I, when I was at Vocus, again, I was really lucky. I, I joined, there was 23 people. By the time I left seven years later, there was about three and a half thousand. And really, really quickly and really fast growth, I learned that focusing on the sales process and effectively making it easy for my sales team to sell was the single biggest thing I could do. And so I got a bit, a teensy bit obsessed about that. So, you know, if I knew that too hard on this call, uh, my apologies. It's something I think about a lot. Now, I, I think the other key thing is we should, you know, everything we should do in sales process, we should be empowering salespeople, not putting the handbrake on. It's very easy in sales process to look for everything that could go wrong and lock that down. Your salespeople can't 
probably sell any more. So it's about finding finding that balance. And you know, the other thing I want to sort of think about is is what does this look like in 2021? And hence, well, we've got Quiller on the call because I think the thing that really attracted me to Quiller was this idea that you know a sales proposal doesn't have to be a PDF. And we think you know I see a lot of companies in the height of technology is like they're like yeah, but I send my PDF through DocuSign, right? You know, it's done online, and you're like yeah, right. yeah. So Steve, let's let's talk a little bit about Quiller and where does it fit into the sales process? Yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, it really can actually fit in, in in any number of places. I mean, I mentioned that the sales proposals being like the classic use case that we we see as a, a pain that would bring customers to us. Um, but Quiller is a smart document tool, so it's allowing you to create any any document as a web page, and so you get mobile responsiveness, analytics, collaboration. You can pull in the superpowers of the web into your documents, things like videos and dynamic pricing and calendars, and all these things that are there to empower sales teams and, and remove friction. So, I mean, we we do see the sales proposal as being one of the bigger use case documents at Quilla, but then as a tool, we have clients that use it uh, right through a sales funnel. So if you imagine uh, one, one client I worked with recently, they would have sort of five or 10 of their top case studies created as Quiller documents, and then they'll embed their sales teams, their AEs calendars into that uh, particular document. So the flow for the customer at top of funnel is they inquire about the company, they get an industry fit case study sent to them, which has the sales team's calendar in it. They book into the meeting, then that goes into a demo using a morphed Quiller document from that original document, then onto like a sales proposal from there, which is another version of that Quiller document, again, all branded and kind of provides content continuity during that process, then through the contract and e-sign. So it can really like support sales teams like throughout that whole process. Um, and I think about like one of the things you mentioned like about empowering sales teams, it, it really is I think important to, a lot of companies are operating almost like a zero trust environment around sales teams and like wanting to lock down permissions and stop their team from doing all these different things. Um, but I, I've seen like the best sales teams I've seen are the complete opposite of that. When you know you empower people and they can go out and, and do the, do their jobs to the best effect. Look, I agree entirely, and, and, and I feel like that's where Flexile really works well with Quilla. You know, we can we can make sure that salespeople can't quote the wrong things. We can make it easy for them to quote. We can hopefully reduce that reliance on you know pre-sales. And I feel like you know it, it's these combination of tools. You know, so you see a RAM your CPQ, your document generation or your proposal tool that in a COVID world where we're, you know, at least mostly remote still, albeit some people are already back to hybrid, certainly in Australia, probably not so much in the UK. But, you know, <laughs> you've just got to be able to, you know, work anywhere and collaborate easily and get things done quickly. So I think that's definitely really powerful. And, and I must say, Steve, one of, one of the things that just with my sales management hat on the thing when I first saw Quilla, was the tracking, you know, I've sent them a document, I can see when they open it. And to me, what a no brainer, right? I see they've opened my proposal. Why don't I call them? Hey, have you had a chance to look at my proposal? I'm looking at it right now. You know, like it's, to me, that's the sort of insight that, I, that surely helps to sell more, right? So that's, I think, really exciting. And the other thing I want to talk about now is so, so Quilla, like you said, it, it can fit multiple places. What sort of integrations does it have? So obviously, in our business, we've got integrated into Salesforce, which is fantastic for us because, you know, that's the CRM right. that we use. But yeah, how broad are those integrations and, and how do people, how are other ways people use it in the business? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so likewise, right, yeah, integrated into Salesforce and then HubSpot are the two lead CRMs that we connect into. So if you imagine in, in the document creation process, it's automatically pulling data out of that that database and putting it into the client facing document. Um, some of the other integrations that Quilla has, you know, you can hook it up to Stripe to drive, sorry, to Slack to drive notifications in if you have documents viewed by customers or documents accepted by customers. So like comms channels like that. Um, and then when a document is completed or signed, you can push pricing through to a, an invoice in Xero or QuickBooks Online. Um, drive information into Stripe for, for payment collection, that sort of thing as well. So it's really sort of designed to sit amongst many different tools and, and fit well into different tech stacks. Yeah, awesome. And I love those those integrations. I mean, we're a big fan of Slack and a big fan of Stripe. And right. 
just the ability when um, you know a customer accepts your proposal to say, I need to send that you know that first fifty percent up front or whatever that on you know initial payment is to automate that. Send a message into Slack so the rest of the team can see you've been successful. Yeah, to me again, this is this is a COVID world, right? You know, we're not all in an office, and you know the days of ringing the bell in the office are a bit old. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe maybe showing my age a little bit there, but uh, <laughs> you know, have have worked in those environments. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and to me, this is this is selling in twenty twenty one, so it's really good. The other thing I want to sort of scratch into is eSign because I feel like, you know, eSign is to me it's been a real revelation for the sales process. I mean, the whole the whole idea of sort of sending a document, they got to print out, they have got to sign, they got to then walk over to someone else to sign, they got to scan back. I mean, that's clearly friction, right? right. And then, you know, we sort of got DocuSign and things like you know other systems where really they are just in the simplest form. You upload your PDF and you make that signing functionality easier. And I, and, I, and I think, you know, well, certainly a lot of the customers we talk to at Opvia, when you say eSign, they think DocuSign. And they also think there's this whole, you know, like if it's not DocuSign, it doesn't do X things, it's not right. Um, sure. Where do you guys sort of fit in? Obviously, you've got eSign. What's your sort of thoughts around eSign and where it sort of fits in and, and how Quill fits into that mix? Yeah, I, I could go on a tangent on this one, Matt, that's for sure. I think that you make an interesting point around DocuSign and it's that sort of brand name that's become synonymous with like an eSign function. But there are, there are plenty of tools out there, Quiller included, that allow documents to be e-signed. And actually, provided you're meeting functionality for the regulation around e-sign, it actually then falls back on the customer creating that document to let their client know what they're signing up to by putting their signature on it. So the onus is around that communication of, uh, you know, by signing this document, you are agreeing to pay us this or do this or that we will do this. So, you know, we see that process happen a lot in Quilla with our with our own eSign function. I think what's interesting with DocuSign is that what we've typically found is that if you go through a complex, a very complex legal process or like redlining and back and forth, I see DocuSign as being, uh, and certain similar tools being a great fit for that, that type of setup. Um, but what's interesting with DocuSign is if you put a DocuSign in front of a customer, their almost like their gut reaction to seeing that type of document is that it needs to go through a legal process. And so what we've done with Quilla with a lot of customers is say, well, actually, if you deliver the document as a beautiful web page to your customer and it doesn't come out of DocuSign, the customer will see that and read that and they might not even ask to redline or go through a contract back and forth. And so you can actually reduce, remove some of the friction in the process that a tool like DocuSign creates. And then one customer recently that I worked with, we went through and said, well, look, what are the what are the top four or five changes that you make in your legal agreement with a customer? Um, let's get your legal team to create addendums for each of those different clauses that you change and then empower the sales team. So we create those as content blocks in Quilla. And then the sales team can say as part of their negotiation, they know they've got those in their back pocket as addendums they can add to a contract. So it actually becomes part of a really fast negotiation process. And again, empowers the sales team, removes friction in that process. And so, you know, it's very use case dependent, but we've seen, we've seen a lot of different scenarios around that where it can be really successful actually to not give the customer the thought that they're going to have to like go through a legal back and forth as part of that like contract signing process. Yeah, look, that's that's fantastic. I love I love all that sort of stuff. I mean, we thought we were pretty revolutionary back in two thousand and five when it was a company called Pipe Networks, where you know contract and we had you know clause standard clause, fallback clause one, fallback clause two, and of course it was just a word document that we had to you know kind of manually edit and send back and forth. So I think what you're proposing right. makes immense sense to me. And look, I I feel that. Oh, we've lost Matt. I know he's. We lost him. Uh, yeah, we have right lost the best him. time, Nicole. <laughs> I know, right? Right in the middle of it. He'll be back on. He's got an iPad set up as a backup. Um, unfortunately, these things happen with technology sometimes. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, right. exactly right. So I think that's uh, that is definitely a really cool feature there. Um, so well, let's talk about fixing the uh, the sales process. So. Well, one of the things that um, I'm, you know, kind of really passionate about is a lot of customers will say, okay, sounds good, but where do we start? 
So when someone approaches you, Steve, to sort of say, hey, you know, we want to do things better. We've got some old school sort of ways. How, how do you help them, you know, figure out what is it they need and, and, you know, will they get a return on investment, all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I think that like, based on a customer using like the PDF output for their document uh, as the sort of current sales proposal and that type of use case, just making the switch to Quilla, we know it's going to imp- increase their sort of brand association and we've seen a lot of customers be able to increase pricing or increase deal conversion rates just by, you know, using it, using Quilla as, as the tool to do this. Um, as far as like the sales process goes, though, I think, again, you can, you can dive into a really deep conversation with a customer around this because normally you're talking to sales leaders and people in sales enablement that are passionate about, like us, about this process. And so... With Quilla, I think that, you know, we've got the opportunity to to permeate that process in a lot of ways and allow salespeople to deliver documents that they're proud of and that they feel like when they send it to their customer, like, yes, I've nailed this, I've put my best foot forward and given myself the best chance to win this business. Um, So I think like the conversations that I have do really go across that whole process and how we can sort of affect it with documents at different stages. I think it kind of, it maybe models on like something like from the challenge of sale, which always rings in my head around like teaching people something they didn't know. I think that's where Quiller adds like a, a huge amount of value in this process. Yeah, great. And, and apologies to everyone. I've been made aware. I, I dropped out briefly. So of course, uh, the one time my internet blips is uh, on a live webinar. <laughs> i having words with my provider. Uh, yeah. And look, just, just want to touch on that myself, Steve, because one, one of the things that I've found and I found this to be really, really valuable as we go in to talk to people is to say to them, you know, create a training doc around, you know, for a brand new user about how you go through that sales process, typically sort of from lead, you know, into opportunity, through to quoting, through to order form. And one of the things we see really regularly is that sales process is somewhat designed at some point in the dim dusk, you know, distant past, it's evolved a whole bunch of stuff sort of crept in. And if you can write a training document for someone, you can see really quickly that, oh, you know, this, this is a bit complex, right? This is, this is right. I've got too many steps in here. And I think the other thing, and the other thing about sales process, you know, especially when you're kind of trying to review it and work out where to start is, is how much time you spend in each area. And so, you know, proposals being a classic one, how much time to create a proposals. We saw a customer recently that we did some work for and it was taking them five days to get a contract out from when the customer said, yes, please, I'd like to go ahead. And, wow, you know, with, with my sales hat on, I, I find that terrifying. I, I like to think I'm a relatively sort of, I try to remember to be paranoid when I'm selling. And, you know, anytime they've said yes, and I don't have an order form in front of them immediately, I'm worried someone's going to steal the deal from me. So I think that's a real risk. And sure. like that horror story before, now immediately they were taking four weeks. So, you know, the gate was wide open and there was like flashing green lights saying, please come in. Uh, but, you know, I think even, you know, if it's not within 24 hours, you've got, I think, a serious problem. And, and I think the other key to me is a lot of customers will talk to us and say, we have problems getting order forms out. Whereas the problem's not actually with the order form, the problem's with quoting. You know, they haven't right. thought of how to get the quoting right. They haven't made agreements around, you know, what are the standard discounts? What are all the different things I can do? And so therefore, by the time they get the customer saying, yes, please, it goes through quite an extensive checking process. And I, I just find that, you know, don't check, check before you send the quote, you know, so that you can move really quickly once the customer's there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that like, for me, like, I, I certainly see that in a sales process, you know, you have deal stages and those kind of different identification points. But I think, if you can simplify those and remove steps for a salesperson to have to take, it almost frees them up to be more creative and uh, and better in that process with their customer because they're not having to think like, what discount can I give here? Like, what term can I do here? Like, what paperwork have I got to get set to do this? You free them of some of those restrictions, and then they can get creative around like how they sell and and how they look after that client, which I think is where, yeah, like certainly from what I've seen, some of that really good stuff happens. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I think if we can, I, I always just think, let's get salespeople selling for as much of their time as possible. And then let's make any of that process at the back end as easy as possible. I mean, you know, we, we've all worked in organizations where, you know, getting a quote out can be a challenge. 
and it's it's quite dispiriting. And you know, I think salespeople, you know, need to be motivated. They need to feel positive and charged up. And investment in sales process really helps their motivation. So when, when you when you when you're thinking about this process and you get engaged by customers, is there any you know like really specific things that you just see regularly? Like, is there you know really obvious things that you're looking for? You know, any kind of any easy ways to hone in on some critical areas that you see from your side? Yeah, but do you mean like from the the sort of statistics around a sales proposal as a document and how it's used right now? Yeah, absolutely. Let's touch on that if you've got some. That sounds great. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, one of the, uh, and, you know, I occasionally get in, into calls with existing clients where we'll review analytics and look at like a selection of documents that they've created over a certain period to sort of understand trends and see how we can influence sales cycles and, and help them convert more of their deals or remove friction. And I think what analytics kind of teach inside the sales proposal as a, uh, as a starting point is that when your customer or your potential customer opens that document, they want to know what you're going to do for them and they want to know what it's going to cost them. And those are the two, two key areas that analytically we see like potential customers come back to like time and again. Um, since COVID, we've done a lot of work with our customers to um, embed the videos within those documents. So those key places where we know our customers will go to um, we'll add video in at that stage because that's that's helping that team be able to sell and influence a deal when they're not in the room because they can you know they can add dynamic content in that way. That's been like tremendously helpful for a lot of customers, especially since we've been in this kind of remote uh, forced remote, remote work environment. Um, and so all the other information around it is important, but those are the sort of two keys that we we come back to in that process. Yeah, great, great, and in. In terms of we sort of set up front that like a really key part of this is selling more. Do you have any sort of anecdotes or stats from the Quilla side about how implementing, you know, like effectively really great tools that speed it up and do a better job? You know, is there evidence to show that it does sell more? Yeah, the, the, there is, Matt. So um, the customers that come to us, like on average, we see like a 20% increase in like closable and conversions from switching to, to Quilla from like, say, a, a PowerPoint to PDF or a Word to PDF route. Um, personally, I've, I mean, I've had customers where that actual conversion rate has increased like sort of three, four hundred percent from switching across to Quilla. So I've certainly seen like some outliers of cases where, you know, that conversion rate has jumped hugely. Sometimes you'll have customers where they, they might already be increased, uh, sorry, they might already be converting a lot of their deals into to, to business. And so actually what Quilla does is provides like a, an increase in the association with their brand that might allow them to increase their pricing. So they're already increasing a lot, like, so already converting a large number of deals. So then the actual change becomes they can now increase their pricing or they can remove some points and close down the sales cycle time. You know, both helpful things for them to, to do internally as well. Yeah, okay. And look, I certainly can't imagine there's too many sales managers out there that don't want a 20% increase in conversion. <laughs> right, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's a no-brainer at that, that's, that stage. Um, I think, you know, we do a really good job, Matt, of tapping into that. Like the ROI conversation is, you know, obviously a huge one for companies making decisions on these tools. And so, you know, we will save them a lot of time in that process and we will increase document conversions. But I think there's a confidence thing and there's like an unknown quantity to this where you're making salespeople feel super confident about the documents they send out, which makes them want to get them done, makes them want to send them out and makes them feel like they're like delivering a proposal or a document that's better than any of their competitors. So there's a certain amount of magic with that as well, which I, I really, you know, I really believe that Quilla has. Yeah, look, absolutely. And how do you feel it's accepted? So, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm, a, I'm an absolute tech head, you know, the, the, the latest tech comes out. I buy it. I buy random things, you know, on like Kickstarter because I just get excited. Right. About <laughs> and you know, so I'm I'm an early adopter, right? So to me, I look at things like this, and I'm just like, I want it. It's amazing. But more broadly, and sort of, you know, as you talk to customers, how well is it sort of taken on? And I mean that both from internal staff members and 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 you know, their adoption, their usage of that, because you know, I remember rolling out CRM in the early 2000s, and people got you know 
It was it was quite it was quite, right. <laughs> quite a challenge, a lot of pushback, um, but but also customers because you know I, I've certainly had you know conversations with people that when you talk about moving away from the PDF they kind of look at you like you're an idiot and you know PDFs are the height of technology. Oh, have we lost you there, Steve, or is it me again? You're still there, Matt. So maybe it's Steve this time. Could be Steve. Welcome to live demo, live webinars on the internet. Correct. And global. Don't forget it's global. We're managing multiple yeah. providers here. Yeah, yeah. It's got to come all the way from the UK. Cool. Well, just, just on that, I suppose I'll, I'll just run some, some of the things we see. Um, we find a lot of people that we initially talk to them about moving away from PDFs to be a little bit skeptical. But once they see that the document can be sent out, uh, it can be tracked. Like I said, you can see when they've logged in. You can see how they interact with your document. You can see how long they spend on it. Uh, they, they typically come around pretty quickly. And one of the things we find is that people sort of say, oh, we'll just use it for this one thing. You know, we don't want to go all in. And, you know, sort of four weeks in, they're like, okay, we're all in. You know, so I think it's one of those things that there, there is that reluctance just because, you know, PDFs have become sort of almost synonymous with business documents and what we send to our customers. So, you know, just that it is a big change, but it's the future. And like Steve was saying, you know, you can receive it on your mobile, on your tablet, on your computer, and yeah, you get the best experience the whole time. Now, why, don't I, why don't I start a demo and by all means, throw questions in the chat while I'm demoing. If you see things coming through that you think that's interesting, I want to scratch at that, ask them. I, uh, I mentioned I'm not the world's best multitasker, so I, I will endeavor to answer them while I'm presenting. But if I'm, if I'm in the middle of it, I'll, uh, I might just take them at the end. We'll see how we go. So what I'm going to do is just launch the demo here. But I'm going to start from CRM. Now, I've got the demo starting from CRM because, you know, this is, this is B2B sales process. And to me, you know, if you don't have your customer in CRM, why are you quoting them? You know what I mean? Like it's, it feels a bit early. So in this example here, I've got my account test.com. I've got a couple of demo opportunities here to, to take you through. I'll show you here. Now, uh, these demo opportunities are a little bit telecommunication centric. And the reason why we're showing them is, is our experience so far, so we're doing across multi industries, telecommunications had some real complexity that a lot of other industries just don't deal with. So they're, they're good ones in terms of showing some of the complexity in a couple of different ways we can do things. So you can see here, I, I've got my Flexile webinar demo set up. That's my opportunity. I'm going to do a data quote. And I've got a button here inside my CRM. And so this button will go in any CRM that has API connection, um, you know, Salesforce Dynamics, Pipedrive, Zoho, all that sort of stuff. And I can just launch directly out of there. So the salesperson, you know, once they've got their opportunity, they can then quote. That then takes me through to Flexile, logs me in. You can see up the top here, it's created a, uh, a quote with the name of my opportunity. It's pulled through my primary contact and the company name. And all I have to do is add a product. So I'm gonna show a managed network product for those of you that don't understand data so much. I mean, just think about you know, the internet service at your home. And this is a little sort of a broken out version for business that just shows some of the components to illustrate some of the complexity. The key, the key for me was really good sales process too. Like I said, is making it easy. So. We try to take what, what we sort of call internally a follow the bouncing ball approach in that, you know, don't ask questions that you're not ready to answer. So you can see here, really, I, I could change the term if I wanted. I can't, I, I could apply a discount with nothing to apply a discount to. So I have to enter an address. So I'll just enter the address of my office location here. That's just a Google autocomplete style field. And so you can see once, once that's done, it's now going to tell me, well, at that address, Matt, if you want to sell a service, here's what's available. So I'll pick a Telstra service. So anyone from Australia will be very familiar with Telstra. They're our you know, number one telco. And I can select a bandwidth. Let's say the customer's looking at 100 meg. I select that there. And then I can pick a device to put on the end of it to manage it for them. So you can see here, I've got about seven devices in my list. And one of the things that Flexo is really good about is understanding your business logic. So if we go to a 200 meg, the customer says, actually, I feel like 200 meg, you'll see I've got a reduced list of CPE in my list here. Now that's because the other ones only support up to about 150. So once you get over 200, let's take them out of selection. Let's make sure that you can't actually quote the wrong thing. So I'll pick this G2 
Juniper device here with, with, with option for 4G backup. I feel like the customer would like to have a 4G service for you know high availability. I, I could I could add a additional CPE device, or I could just use the primary one. That feels you know that feels right. And because I've used the primary CPE, I've selected 4G access. The system knows well you're going to need a SIM in there to make that work. It defaults to unlimited data, but you know if they wanted to save a little bit of money, I could just put a five gig service in there. Pretty simple stuff. So really easy. You can see here how a salesperson can quote, you know, on a Zoom call like I've just done in front of a customer. How do you think about the price? Um, we can quote in front of the customer on an iPad in their office. Really, really simple to work through. And then I can sync it back to Salesforce. So again, I put my sales manager hat on and, you know, trying to get 100% accurate pipeline, one of the most frustrating things for sales managers, you know, you're presenting to your boss or to the board and you want to have complete faith in your pipeline. So if I go back here and just, just refresh this so I can see it, you'll see now I've got a quote attached. I've got dollar figures here. So the salesperson, you know, to me, this frees them up. They have to have create an opportunity, kind of non-negotiable because they've got to store data. They have to do quotes. You can't get paid commission if you don't do a quote. You can't get an order if you don't do a quote. But they don't then have to go back and update Salesforce. So that's a really big saving or, or their CRM. So I can, I can just have a look in there at the quote and see what's been pushed across. Now, in this instance, I've just pushed some summary data across, but you can push in whatever you want. So, you know, very flexible, very customizable. And we talked about Quilla. So I've got, I've got Quilla here. I can just create a new quote, pick up the obvious proposal, use the template. And we can view that before we send that out to the customer. So you can see here, and you know, look, this was designed by me, not a graphic designer. And Steve did a little bit of work to make it pretty last night. So thanks, Steve. But this just gives you an idea of what you can send out. So a little bit about the company, you can see the two products there I've pulled through. I've got my total. Um, can we help with setup? So I've got a couple of onboarding products there that, that, that are optional that they can tick and select in. And like Steve said, a video, and, and, and I think this is really cool. So to me, this is selling in 2021. So we'll just... Hey, yeah. Matt, Steve Aquila here. This is an example of a video being embedded back into a Aquila document. And so something our customers have been doing to great effect in sales processes is creating videos inside their document where they talk their customer through the document, um, help them through any specific points, chat through pricing, give them options, let them know what happens next and how to move forward with the document they've provided. And so this is just a quick example of a, a record inside a Quilla page where you can then take this video and embed it back into the document. I hope this is helpful. It indeed was helpful. So to me, that's really great because, you know, I always think, you know, my memory is like, I don't like to send a quote to somebody without explaining it to them to make sure they're really clear. And what a great opportunity. You can put a little explainer in it as you send it out. I think that's fantastic. Obviously, we talked about, you know, e-signed ability to have an acceptance process. So it's a, it's a really cool, nice tool that you can use to send it directly out to your customers. I'll uh, just jump back here into... Salesforce and I'll do uh, another another proposal just to show you something different. Um, just got another opportunity here that I, uh, one that I prepared earlier. So let's uh, launch a quote again in Flexile. So you can see here it's brought through, you know, the different name, you know, obviously same company, same, same contact. And I, I'll do a voice product and Assuming I can spell properly, I show a voice product. So to me, what I'm showing here is just a different way of selling. So this is the other product I showed is what we call a sort of a tight bundle. It's highly integrated. All the pieces are, you know, stuck together and, and it just calculates a single line price. And that would typically flow through to billing as a single line item on your billing. In this instance, this is more of a configurator type solution where we ask questions and then we add products to the proposal based on the questions. So again, voice, one of the world's simplest products. We all use voice. We all need a voice solution. Uh, surprisingly difficult for salespeople to sell because there's just enough variables to make it complicated. So this is, this is a really good example. So you can say, I'm quoting a small business. They've got 10 users. Um, we'll leave them just on the, the standard phone plan. We'll leave 36 months. 
we'll uh, we'll we'll port across ten numbers for them. We'll give them one. So a direct in dial range is, just means they have everybody has their own number. So we'll give them one of those. They might want a free call number so that people can call in and they might already have one. And then we, they might say, how many, how many phones do you need? So with 10 users, let's say that five of them can have a standard handset. Five of them are really important people. So let's give them video handsets. They want the, the fancy one and maybe just a conference phone for their boardroom. And let's say a few people work from home regularly. They might just want a headset to make that easier as well. So let's throw that in there. Now installation here, installation could be a calculation based on those previous selections, um, or it can be just a, a free text here. So looking at this, I'm gonna say installation is, is really only about three hours. Uh, and let's do some online training. Let's just make that one hour because it's gonna be a pretty simple system. So once I've gone through and, you know, this is something you, work, work, you can work through with a customer on the phone, or like I said, in person with an iPad or a, a tablet device, I can just create the products. So rather than sort of asking, you know, do you want this model phone? Do you want this, that, and other? Much easier and faster way to get there. And so you can see now that I've added a bunch of different products here. I've got my voice plan. I've got my different ports, my phone numbers, my handsets, and it, it's picked the appropriate handset based on the question answered, the conference phone, the headset, and the installation. Now I can then look at that just in a customer facing version in Flexol. And I think this is where this kind of idea of configure price quote versus what Quilla comes in. So this to me is a quote. It's a short summary of what you're getting a price for, whereas a proposal is this plus more, you know, a bit of a sales pitch from the company. So Flexile, configure price quote, Quilla takes it to the next level for proposals. So you can see here, I've got, got things broken out. There's a mix of recurring revenue items and one-off items. We can do some other cool things here. Like we might just say, actually, let's just deselect that as standard and make it optional, the conference phone. Um, and maybe the same with the headsets, right? So we'll just make those optionals. They can select those in. So then we view the quote now. We'll see their, their optional items there. It shows the dollar figures. And if you watch the totals, the totals will increase as I add things to them. So yeah, I, I do want those, they're good. Um, and again, very lightweight, e-sign certainly meets Australian, Australian requirements. You've got to type a name, you've got to type an email. And once you've done that, you can then accept quote. So again, you can see here, we're talking about really lightweight ways of signing customers up today. We've got some very, a very small amount of boilerplate it's referencing an online standard form of agreement and you know a really great and you know really good way to tackle it as long as that works for your industry and your uh, you know your requirements the other the other thing that these templates can be set up to do which is quite handy because you know we talked about online 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 and how cool that is a lot of people still want a pdf so you can print this to pdf and you can see that when we print to pdf it gives you an old fashioned signing block so you can just print that out you can take that with you to the customer you know, hand them the pen and say, please sign, or you can throw that into your e-sign solution. So very, very flexible. So that's the um, main things I wanted to demo to people. Flexile is a lot more than just a quoting system. To me, quoting is kind of the, the output of, of really well-designed products and pricing. So while salespeople tend to just, just spend their time in the quoting module here, and the product catalog. And so the product catalog just shows you every, ad, every active product that's available for sale. Good to browse through if you're a salesperson. You're not sure what options you might wanna to present to somebody. You might have a look in the catalog, you know, in the, in the 10 minutes before you get on the Zoom call. For product managers and pricing managers, there's a full back end where you can manage your products and you can build them up. Uh, we looked at a, a managed network product earlier. And so we can see that here in, in the back end editor. Um, you know, where this is where we build it up. It's relatively simple and easy to use. We, we, we sort of say, look, if you're a good Excel user, you know, your way around a spreadsheet, you know, maybe you could, you've been in sales operations, you can do this on your ear. Product managers pick it up really easily. It's quite easy to use. And it also holds pricing. So there's, there's a lot of different pricing you can put in here. Um, in that solution I quoted earlier, the managed network one, we quoted up a Telstra, even an access service. So there's a very simple price table we're just looking up to get that pricing. 
And again, while we can, from our system, we can do an API call out to another system to say, hey, is it available? What's the price? Sometimes that's a multi-call process and it's just a little bit slow on the, the user experience. So we find it's a lot easier to say, what's available, please supplier, and then have a preloaded price book, um, unless the pricing changes, you know, weekly or monthly, in which case do the API call for that as well. So they're the sort of, you know, a very short demo of uh, Flexile and a little bit of a taster. I'd like to open it up now for questions if anybody wants to ask any questions or, or even see anything specific in the, um, in the thing. We've got a question here from Dan Whitford. What is the primary route field for? And so that was in that managed network example I, I showed. So one of the ways to calculate the price when you say, hey, Telstra, what's available at this address? They'll say, this product's available, but here's an identifier. They call it a primary route. And then that allows us to look up the price. So without that information, we can't look up the price. So just, you know, we reflect that back to a salesperson because it's obviously useful for them to understand, um, yeah, whether that made sense. Now, I believe, Steve, you're back with us. Any, uh, any final thoughts? No, maybe he... still suffering technical difficulties. Okay, well, look, ap apologies everywhere, everyone. We nearly got there through the whole thing with no technical uh, snafus, but uh, we lost our special guest at the end. So apologies again. Um, if anyone has any other questions, throw them in there. Otherwise, I think we will wrap it up. Perfect. Sounds good, Matt. It looks like everyone's pretty quiet. Um, so we might wrap it up early and give about nine minutes back. I do just want to say we did record the session today. So we'll pop that across to everyone in the next couple of days once I've had a chance to just check the recording first. Um, but otherwise, I want to say thank you, Matt. Um, we'll pop a note across to Steve as well to thank him for his time. Um, it's quite late in the UK where he is. So he's probably grateful, actually, for those technical difficulties so he could knock off early. Um, and yeah, thanks for everyone for dialing in for those questions. Have a good uh, rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.